this is currently the best llm when it comes to coding yes it's better than find it is better than code llama and in my experience even better than gpt 3.5 and now in this video we're going to be taking it through some extensive coding testing i'm going to give it a lot of coding tasks to figure out exactly how good it is these tests are really extensive and some of these even an actual human coder might fail at these but we're going to test it and we're going to find out just how good it is now i've already tested this model and it is really really good so i'm going to be integrating it into my visual studio setup so that it can code in visual studio while running right on my local machine and once i'm done with that i'll go ahead and make a video so make sure that you guys are subscribed so that you do not miss out on that video where i'll be setting it up running on my local machine and generating code for me inside of visual studio so let's go ahead and get started now this is the github page for dipsig and on here they've already shown their superiority basically to pretty much every other coding model and this is absolutely true because i have tested this model already it is really 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 good even the 7b version the quantized model is actually quite good and, and that's the one that i'm going to be running on my local visual studio setup in my next video so on here they go ahead and give a little bit of an introduction they say it was trained on scratch on 2 trillion tokens with a composition of 87% code and 13% natural language in both English and Chinese. So maybe that means that it's not too good at converting natural language into code but we'll definitely see in our tests. And then they go ahead and compare it to the other models. Like I said it is really really good. It's a very very good model strictly in coding though. But that's enough looking at the GitHub page. Let's go ahead and figure out exactly how you can use it. So you can go ahead and test it out with me by heading over to coder.deepseek.com. They will require you to create some sort of account but then after that they'll go ahead and take you straight to this website where you should be able to test out this model all right so let's go ahead and get started with our very first test i'm getting this from a website called edacore and this is just code that should have an error in it so it, so it just says discriminant record and null pointer so let's go ahead and put this in all right so i'm just putting the code in here and i'm just going to say find any errors in here send that and let's see what it thinks so it says the code you found seems to be mostly correct but there is a few issues now i've got them side by side so that we can just compare with what Deepseek has discovered as well as what the actual bugs are. Now the very first bug it has actually found correctly so that's this particular line of code here. It does go ahead and highlight that we're trying to access the mod field this one over here but we could end up getting an exception if the fallback parameter here is wrong. Now as far as the rest of the errors that it seems to have found it doesn't seem to have found this particular error that's on line 73. I'm not too familiar with ADA so I'm not too sure about the rest of the things that it is saying but it definitely has found at least one particular problem with this code so i will give it a pass for this one now the next text involves converting natural language into xml so the chat input here is really really short but this is simply a general description of three people and all their properties and what i'm going to tell the model is i'm going to say put this into xml so let's see how it handles this nice so it looks like it's creating a general description for these people and i definitely would classify this as a pass it has has grossly simplified the expression but it has been able to produce very viable xml from that particular description let's move on to the next test now we already tested the model's ability to detect errors in our code but this test here is a little bit more complicated now this code here doesn't have any errors in it but it does have very significant security flaws so for instance this method of querying an sql database is open to sql injection we are handling sensitive data like a password here and yet we're doing it in an exposed http fashion and then also we're we're not doing any validation on the username and password and i want to see if this deep seek ai can go ahead and detect these issues so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go ahead and select all this and i'm just going to go ahead and paste it back here inside of deep seek and when i send it as you can see deep seek immediately detects the issue it says the code you've posted is vulnerable to sql injection attacks that is because it directly incorporates the user input into an sql query without any sanitization or parameterization this can allow the attackers it goes on it goes on and then it writes me a safer version of the code now i can validate that this version of the code is actually safer than the previous version but still it doesn't go ahead and let me know that i should handle this code inside of an https request which is still sort of a problem because we are handling sensitive user data but at the very least it does inform me right away without even me asking it goes ahead and lets me know straight away that this is very dangerous this code over here now next we're going to test this model's capacity to problem solve with constraints so this is the 
prompt that I'm giving it. I've said write a function in Java that sorts a list of numbers, but you must not use any built-in sorting functions and then explain your approach. Let's see its response to this. And there you go. It apparently has no problem whatsoever. It just says, here's a simple implementation of the bubble sort algorithm in Java. Then it goes ahead and explains what the bubble sort does because I did ask it to explain that. And it actually gives me some good examples as well, which is pretty cool. So it definitely can do that. And then now this next one is a little bit more complicated than the previous one. So I'm testing the model's capacity to modify existing algorithms to make them better for a given particular task. So I'm just saying modify the standard Dijkstra algorithm in Python to handle weighted graphs where weights can be negative. So I'm just going to go ahead and send this. And there you go. It immediately comes up with the Bellman Ford algorithm, which is an algorithm that can report negative values, unlike the Dijkstra algorithm. And yeah, it definitely gets that right in this particular case. So it's pretty amazing just how intelligent this particular model is. And now we're finally here for the final test. Now, because the DeepSeek developers already demonstrated that DeepSeek can build a snake game on its own on their website, I'm not going to ask it to build a snake game, but I am going to ask it to build a game and I'm going to ask it to build 2048. Now, a lot of you might not know what this game is. It's basically a game where you move cards around by pressing a button. When two identical cards touch, their number adds and the goal is to get to 248 and in most cases, you just cannot do it. I've played this game multiple times and I tend to fail a lot along the way. But yeah, let's go ahead and see if this model can create this game inside of Python. So the exact prompt that I'm giving it is make 2048 in Python. I'm just going to clarify this a little bit by saying make the 2048 game in Python code. So then let's see if it even knows what that game is. So it's definitely chugging away at writing the code. And I'm really glad that it has started by telling me to install Pygame. A lot of models out there will give you code and they won't start by telling you what you need to import. I don't have Pygame installed on my machine, so it's really good that it's letting me know that I need to install that. And it's written all the code, so let me put this into my code editor and we can find out if this actually works. So for starters, I'm going ahead and installing Pygame, which does take a while. Great, so Pygame is fully installed. I'm going to go ahead and copy all this code and then I will open it up inside of my editor here and then I'm going to paste it and then we can wait to see if we get any errors. Now I'm going to go ahead and open up the terminal and give this code a chance to run and let's see if it can actually do this. So the game is actually running and I'm going to go ahead and press my buttons. When I press the keyboard buttons though, it would appear that I can't get any movement from the Pi game. So it does actually run, but I can't seem to actually get any movement in here. So that's a bit of a letdown. Um, let me go ahead and let the model know that I can't seem to get any movement with my mouse buttons and let's just see what it thinks about that because it might actually be able to fix it. So I've just let it know I can't get any movement with my mouse buttons. It's just saying if you're having trouble with the mouse buttons, it's likely due to a misunderstanding of how Pygame handles the events. Here's a simple example of how to handle mouse events and it's not actually given me any modified code. Fine. So it can actually open up a window like this one, but it can't actually get it to move. But I have seen other examples where, but I have seen examples demonstrated where it was able to write a snake game inside of Python. So maybe that's something that they trained it on specifically. Nonetheless, of course, no other model can get this right. Not even the snake game. So Dipsy Coder is still the very best coding model. If you're just using your model for coding right now, you definitely want to be using this one. Again, like I said, in my next video, I'm going to be showing you how to install Dipsy Coder inside of Visual Studio Code so that it can code for you in your actual project. So make sure you guys subscribe and like this video so you don't miss out on that next one.